All right, what's up, family? We're back with another episode. It's your girl, Jim Ether, and this is Gods and Goddesses Weather Report Tarot Readings. Might be the smoothest I ever, ever said it. So, we're going to get straight into it. We're going to do a Twin Flame reading. I've been looking up spreads, finding them online, so we're going to try a, something a little different. We're going to roll with, usually I have my own questions, which we'll still fuck with. But we're also going to use this new spread I just looked up like two minutes ago. It's a simple ass spread so that way we can still get both done. Do mine as far as the freestyle and mess with this spread. And I feel like this spread may give us some more stuff to go off of that we may not have got if I just pulled and got the freestyle energy. So as you all know, this is a general reading. If you guys feel like these messages resonate and you want to get a personal reading, something that's more catered or is going to be catered to your personal story, then just look down in the description box. That's where all my info will be. Uh, you can email me at godsandgoddessesweatherreport at gmail.com. But definitely look down in the description box to check it out. And let's see what's going on. I already pre-shuffled, so I'm not too worried. So what we're going to see first, the first card, we're going to pull out and pull all the cards, but we're going to see what you, the Divine Feminine, we're going to assume mostly Divine Feminine's on here. If Divine Masculine's on here, what's up Divine Masculine? You guys will get info too, of course. So Divine Feminine, I don't want to take them. Let's see, what do you really want from this union? What do you want, Divine Feminine, from this union? This will help you get some more insight too on what it's even for. Because, you know what I mean, we get caught up in the journey. And it's like, at the end of the day, you can forget why you even wanted the journey in the first place. Or why you're even on a journey. So that card is going to tell you what you really want from the union. Second card is going to tell you what you're not seeing clearly about the Divine Masculine. So what are you not seeing clearly? You got three cards for what you're not seeing clearly. What... Would your life be if you got together? What would your life be like if you got together? This would be as of now. So this will also let you know if Divine Masculine is ready. We got one card for that. Okay, how does Divine Masculine truly feel about you? Deep, deep, deep in his heart. How does Divine Masculine truly feel about Divine Feminine deep in her heart? And where is this connection going in the future? And this is right after, or this is right up under uh, what your life would be like together. So right up under that, you see where the connection is going in the future. All right. Sorry, guys. I like the to top to keep you guys into it while I'm doing all the shuffling. So the first card is what? Do you really want from this union, Divine Feminine? We got the Hermit card. So, as I said, as of right now, it's like you guys don't even really know. The Hermit card is someone that's in deep introspection. It's like you guys have been on this journey. Some of you guys have been on this journey for months. Some one year, some more than one year, some five plus. If you want it five plus, date, do something. Get out there, have some fun. If you want to, to any time, any part of the journey, Divine Feminine, you should always be doing you, living your best life, and making sure you're tapping into your uh, higher self and into your spirituality. And also, of course, going out, having a good time, living your best life. But Divine Feminine, what you want for the union, we'll, we'll clarify. We have to, as of right now, is you, you're not sure. You're in deep thought. You're worried about the union. This person looks like they're wasting away. This hermit card, the hermit's usually someone who is a... Uh, looking strong and muscular, got his cloak on, but this guy looks like he's wasted away. He might have sold his cloak somewhere or lost it. I don't know what the hell happened to his cloak. So you're still looking for your reason at this point. You don't even know why at this point. And that's why you have your flame lit, your torch is like, why the fuck am I on this journey again? So now we got, what am I not seeing clearly about the Divine Masculine? The King of Coins came out. If 
for what you're not seeing clearly. Let's see what this means. Let me look at it. All right, so I feel like right now you're not seeing that this divine masculine is actually at a standstill. And you guys probably could be seeing this, but you're not understanding that this divine masculine has to be. Like, just because this card came out, so it's different for you to just know it. Like, this motherfucker is not coming towards me. Yeah, we know that. But this card's actually saying what you're not seeing clearly is that your divine masculine is being divinely guided to be in this state of rest. Your divine masculine is thinking, and as the king of coins, so this is a good sign, in power as a king, as a king of coins, someone who is studied, but in thought. So they're in sit-down mode. This is what you are not, this is what you're not seeing clearly. You're not seeing clearly that they are actually tapping in. They're tapping in on a lot of things they're holding on to their money, which means they're not giving it away to any karmic situations or anything that's stupid. They're not uh, karmic situations as far as people or karmic situations as far as bad habits. So gambling or drug usage, anything like that. So they are holding on to their money, trying to figure out ways to build their money right now. And they're also tapping into their higher self. We'll clarify if we have to, but they are definitely tapping in. And I feel like they are coming across secrets because this high priestess is about secrets. So either they, the divine masculine is digging into their own secrets that they have kept from people and looking at their self from a higher perspective of seeing everything for what it truly is, or they are actually discovering secrets that have been kept from them. So this is why they kind of have to be at a standstill so they can put everything together. So these are the things that you're not seeing clearly because you're not in contact. So you have no idea what's going on. Which, of course, is not your fault. You just don't know. So these are the things that you're not seeing. So now we're going to look at what, what your life would be like if you and Divine Masculine were together. We got the Queen of Staffs. The Queen of Staffs is passionate, holding a bouquet of flowers. So I feel like you guys would be getting flowers often. This would be something that's very often done, maybe once a week, every Friday, whatever it is. Uh, very, very passionate, showing some skin just a little bit. So the, the Queen of Wands is someone that's in this deck. She's, she's meditating too. She's holding that wand of passion. And she's uh, also... I'm looking at this golden, I don't know if this is a lion right here, but it's looking like, like a spirit animal, like a protector. So I feel like this, this union would be protected if you guys were together. Or your divine masculine would be your protector and you would also protect your divine masculine. You guys would be very passionate about each other. And it would also be, even though there's passion, I'm seeing that white to show that purity. So... There would be a lot of fire, passion, desire between you guys, but it would still come from a place of pure intentions. So that's what the union would be like. Pow power. I didn't want to say power, but power. There will be a lot of power within it. You guys will be able to tap in because you see this woman is in a state of meditation. So you guys will be tapping in, finding your power, and it will be highly, highly protected. And it would definitely be passionate, but from a place of pure love. So now we're checking out how does he truly feel about you? Deepest feelings. The deepest feelings is the four staff. So the divine masculine knows what it is. This is the twin flame card. Definitely mine and, and the twin flame card for a lot of other readers. So your divine masculine could have done research and actually is fully aware of this union and sees you as their divine feminine. So the Divine Masculine definitely sees you as someone that's stable, someone that they can build a happy home with and settle down. That's their deepest feelings about you. Now we're going to see where the connection is going in the future. I do not read reversals, guys. So in the future, 
We got the Knight of Coins. There's another card. I forget what it is. It may be the Knave of Coins. But the Knave of Coins is behind this little stream. And that stream of water always... I always say this is a, a small, but it's still... It's like the end. The last thing. But it's still uh, an emotional block. Because the water represents water. So, usually this... In the nave, I believe, of coins, the nave is behind this water. So it's like there's still a blockage in front of them. But this is showing that in the future, this knight has crossed over that last emotional blockage and is ready to hand you something. Now, the question is, are you ready to receive it? And also, I always see this hand as someone who is kind of like a thief or someone who's not showing their full cards, not being truthful. So in the future, it's almost like either he could be giving this to you, but I'm almost feeling like he's giving this to someone else. Okay. Okay, I see what it is. So basically, I always see this hand as someone who's like not showing the true card, someone that could steal this coin, someone that could run off because you can't even see them. So I feel like even though they're ready to offer this to you, they are still very wary of what you're going to do with this offer. One, are you going to accept the offer? Are you going to reject the offer? Are you going to pretend to accept the offer and then run off like how they did you? So they're not sure what your intentions are going to be. So that's why you're not fully being shown in that card because they can't see you. They don't see your true intentions just yet because you guys are in communication or out of communication. So because of this, even though they're almost at a completion and they're ready to offer, this is still a hidden part. That's the hidden part of the connection in the future is how will you receive this offer? Remember, the, the moon is all about receiving the feminine energy. So it's how will you receive this offer? And here we go. This is, this is the card I was talking about. It's the Knight of Cups. So yeah, they want to come over, but I feel like this is actually the emotional blockage is... Not knowing how you'll receive it. So I would say in the future, even though I know a lot of divine feminists have decided to play the more uh, I don't give a fuck about the union role, which is just fine because of how it's played out. But it's like you may want to, and I've actually heard another reader say this, throw out some sort of smoke signal. It don't got to be nothing extravagant, but something to kind of let them know. Like it's good because they're super scared and they're feeling stuck. So, unless they feel comfortable, they are going to be in this position it's looking like. The stuck position. You know, now the energies could shift. There could be something that happens in their life that brings them out of this stuck position where you don't have to make a move. So, that's why we're going to keep asking questions and going into this. So, Divine Feminine. Let's keep going with this Eight of Swords. What's, what's, keep, what's going to prevent the Eight of Swords in the future? What can Divine Feminine, is there anything Divine Feminine can do to stop this Eight of Swords in the future? Anything Divine Feminine can do to stop the Eight of Swords in the future? Put something on the Eight of Swords for Divine Feminine. Yeah, so Divine Feminine, you have to... It's the Ace of Swords came out. For the Eight of Swords. The Ace of Swords came out. So it's like you have to release him from this, actually. It's looking like you're going to have to play Captain save -Ho and cut him out of this bondage by letting him know that you're ready to have this new beginning because that's what the Ace of Swords represents, a new beginning. Yeah, they're saying, I know this is fucked up. They're saying that you're going to have to, this is a, some type of smoke signal. You don't have to call. You don't have to really say this. But even the energy, remember, this is all about energy. So your energy must shift from being fucking pissed to actually having faith and believing in having this new beginning and wanting it again. Actually, remember, because you forgot why. So you need to actually go back and remember why you love this person. Why you love or why you fell in love with the DM in the first place. Why you started this. Once you figure that out, then you'll be 
able to be assured in wanting this new beginning and cutting loose the burden that you've been holding on to. And you'll be ready to stand waiting for them ships to come. So what's Divine Masculine supposed to be doing? We hear what Divine Feminine is supposed to do. Let's see what Divine Masculine is doing during this process. Oh, shit. Divine Masculine is calling injustice. So that karmic situation that was going on, Divine Masculine is in the middle of having justice and calling it himself, weighing his heart against this feather in this deck. So that means he's dropping the baggage just as you are. So you're being advised to cut loose the baggage and he's actually cutting loose his baggage because that's the only way his bad feelings, his negative lower energy thoughts because with these thoughts, his heart will never weigh as light as this feather or lighter. He has to release all these baggage and all the negative lower energies so his heart can be lighter than a feather. So that's what he's doing right now. So that should give you a lot of faith, Divine Feminine, to actually do what you, what you need to do. Because I know, I wasn't feeling it either. That's why I had to ask. Like, whoa, wait a minute. So what's going on for the Divine Masculines that were with the Karmics? What's going on between the Divine Masculine and the Karmics? Taking the one that flew up. Okay, we got the King of Staffs. This King of Staffs, this is someone who, I mean, the, the Staffs is fire, passion, all that. Fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. But this king of stats, they're all about passion, but this person looks like they're upset. Like they're very sad. Like their passion is not being fulfilled. You feel me? You look at their face. Yeah, so this man looks like his passion is not being fulfilled. But then, oh, just seeing it as I put the card down. It's like there is a beetle. This is a god, god symbol, coming to give some type of enlightenment, some message. But he's not looking at the beetle. He's just worried about not being fulfilled at this point. So what else is going on between the karmic and the uh, divine masculine? Okay, we got the empress. I want to clarify, but we got the snake wrapped around. Now, the empress is seen as a divine figure. But the Empress could also be the karmic with this snake wrapped around their uh, hand or arm. So like I said, you're divine. Oh, I, I didn't say this. I was listening to music before I tapped into the energy of the divine masculine. And a lot of female songs were coming up to the point where I had to just assume... That the divine fucking masculine is tapping highly in to their feminine energy. The song, uh, the song Everything to Me by Monica came on. Where it was like a, a homage or homage, paying homage to you, divine feminine. But then, uh, oh, this, also this song could have been. The, the first song that came on was could have been. Look these songs up, write them down. They're good songs. Could have been came on by her, H-E-R, featuring Bryson Tiller. Then the next song that came on was Everything to Me, Monica, which was like a paying super homage. And then the next song that came on was How Many Drinks, Miguel. I felt like immediately once I tapped in, like I was listening to it like, well, what the hell? So, I mean, I got a hit that this was the karmic trying to actually, you know, put the moves on the divine masculine by using alcohol or whatever they could use. How many drinks does it take you to leave with me? Girl, you look good. Got money, but I don't want to waste my time. See the club. I'm hoping about two or three. So, basically, and then, you know, the song says, uh, we fucking or nah. I ain't judging if you if you decide you might be fucking tonight. Uh, I ain't judging if you wait, decide that we might be fucking tonight. Yeah. So, that was definitely the karmic trying to get some ass. I feel like trying to shoot shots. Uh, 
then the next song. So I feel like this could like okay. So basically, what I'm saying is, with the so many female songs that I was tapping into or that were coming on randomly as I was doing the shuffle. Yeah, without me, Fantasia came on next. So it's like the Divine Masculine in the midst of that, the karmic breaking in, the Divine Masculine broke back in and started talking shit. So at first, the Divine Masculine was talking about you. Could have been uh, everything to me. Then the karmic breaks in with how many drinks it's going to take you to leave with me. And then the next song comes in with Divine Masculine shooting back at this motherfucker like, Can't Raise a Man by K. Michelle. Get older but never grew, or got older, but never grew, try to talk to him, but can't get through. You know what I mean? So, playing games like it'll never lose you. So, or her. This is the karmic. Whatever your, your divine masculine is fucking with a female, or, you know, this is not gender specific. But, like I said, this was a lot of female energized music, so I feel like divine masculine is definitely tapping into the mask, I mean, feminine energy, no matter what their gender is. So the next song was Without Me. This is my shit low key. A lot of people don't know about this shit. At least I believe they don't. This is Fantasia featuring Kelly Rowland. This song is basically saying, what would you be without me? What would you be without me? It's really good. It got a good beat. It's funky. It's for y'all don't love this. Listen to these songs. So it's just basically, I felt like still clapping on the karmic. Like, what would you be without me? You're fronting. This is a facade. I'm about to pull your card. Says that shit. Like, I'm about to pull your card and let motherfuckers know you're a front. What would you be without me? So, then we got Girl on Fire. Living in a catastrophe. But he knows he can fly away. But she knows she can fly away. So, the Divine Masculine's feeling like, yeah, this shit's a catastrophe. But I know who the fuck I am. What would you be without me? I could fly the fuck out this bitch. So, the DM, like I said, is tapping in. Got their heads in the cloud, thinking about you and thinking about uh, Champagne Life came on, thinking about just really freeing herself. Like the Divine Masculine, let's not get it fucked up. Divine Masculine's first stop is not Divine Feminine. And boys, in my, if I was in that situation, my first stop would not be Divine Masculine to go run into a, and if it was, it wouldn't necessarily be to be, let's get married right now. It may be once a month we kicking it and I'm kicking it with a whole bunch of other people because I've been in jail for a very, very long time. And that's another thing that could be symbolized is that they are still stuck here, but they're still stuck here because they're not sure of what you're going to say if you're going to accept their offer. So that's why they're still staying better safe than sorry. But even for Divine Masculine, they have to get out of that because that's a blockage. Don't stay in a bad situation because... You don't feel like someone can save you. You have to save yourself. Or else the Divine Feminine is going to feel like some 3-6. Don't save her. She don't have you saved. Don't say Because if 3-6 if seen a motherfucker like this, they would definitely say, Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Don't uh don't want to be saved. You feel me? There's someone like someone that wants to be saved. You can just get up. So that's why you're not being uh, Mario'd out this bitch or princessed out this bitch. And we're not turning into Mario because it don't seem like you want to be saved. Put out a smoke flag. Like, yeah, I mean, a princess seemed like she wanted to be saved. So anyway, back to this card. On what's going on. With the Divine Masculine and the Karmic. The Divine Masculine and the Karmic, like I said, I believe this is your Divine Masculine tapping into his feminine energy. So kind of taking on the role of you, Divine Feminine, being the Empress. But we got this snake wrapped around his arms. So this is someone holding them back in this Karmic energy. Still in this third party situation. What's the karmic thinking? What's the karmic thoughts? Deepest thoughts. Yeah, the karmic's deepest thoughts is still thinking about how the fuck they can get away with this. There's something that the karmic is hiding also. Because it looks like they're stealing behind the divine masculine's back. 
This is like last communication. So there's something that they're lying to, lying about to keep this connection going because they still want to keep this match, the empress and the emperor. This is them. So they still want to keep this going. That's what they're thinking about. How can I? And remember, the emperor is very, this could be someone that's very, very fucking controlling, especially since we're talking about this karmic and what's going on. So I feel like the karmic, is using a lot of power, a lot bigger than this empress in this deck. This the emperor is never this bulky, y'all. It's weird. And we got justice. Okay, so we got the little empress with the snake. The snake. So this is basically this motherfucker. Imagine this big ass motherfucker wrapped around your arm. This is a bulky. You can't get away from this. The emperor's never this bulky, y'all. Uh, let me know if y'all be seeing bulky-ass emperors. I mean, look how fucking big he is, really. Like, damn, was he on steroids? What the fuck? Some of y'all could be dealing with a karmic that takes uh, creatine or steroids or muscle enhancers or something like that. Uh, yeah, but even though they're trying to hold on tight, they know. The karmic's thinking, like, this is fucking over. The world card's here. When I ask about what the karmic feels. So they know it's over. Karmic knows. So what's next in this connection? What's next for divine feminine and divine masculine? And this is for up to the end of uh, January. But this is not time specific. I'm putting it on for right now just so we kind of know. So this is for the next couple weeks. What's next in the next couple weeks? I'll say that. Because my readings are not time-specific. Whenever you run into them is when you were meant to run into them. What's next for Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine? All right, so we got the Knight of Swords that came out. So let me look. Yeah, this is this is always it. Yeah, if y'all been keeping up with me, I always see this is Divine Masculine trying to get away, and this is the Karmic. So the Karmic's going to be latching the fuck on, trying to stop by any means necessary. As the Divine Masculine is trying to do something. These are love messages. They may not be, but you see. Okay, he has one wand in his hand. And the other wands are still right above where that wand is in his hand. So these messages have not been sent. These are messages of love, but they are not flying through the air. They are still with him because he cannot send them. Because he's still tied into this devil energy. The karmic energy. So that's what's next. You guys are going to be dealing with this. How long is this going to be lasting? So we got the five, the conflicts. Could be five weeks, five months. Hopefully not five years. If it's five years, get the fuck out of there, y'all. Do something, live your life. Live your best life. Don't go back and forth with these. Mm -mm. All right, so could be five months, but we know it's definitely going to involve conflicts. Could be nine. Could be nine months. We see this is someone that's very tired of this bullshit. A lot of thinking about how to get out of it. So what is Divine Masculine being advised to do? What is Divine Masculine being advised to do? I right, said so Divine Masculine is being advised to go in for the kill. Go in for this victory. Kill this shit. 
That's what divine masculine don't understand. Divine masculine, if you're watching, the power is like Captain Planet. The power is yours. You feel me? See this victory sign? It's all about you having enough passion, enough fire to really say some shit and make it stick. To really tap into your intuition and uh once again we got the snake energy on your hand. So almost like fighting fire with fire. If this person's trying to latch on to you and you can't get away, maybe you've been trying to do it passively, divine masculine, trying to be nice about it. But there comes a time where you can't be nice, where you have to put your sword up and get ready for battle and fight that fire with fire. They want to put the snake on you. Okay, well now, before it was them as the snake around you, but now you didn't put the snake in your arm. You didn't sapped up the power of the snake, which is that would be like alchemy using their energy against them. You feel me? So they want to come at you. It's called mirroring. They want to come at you foul when you really want to end shit nice. Well, I can't be nice. Get the fuck out of here. I'm done, son. Peace. So that's what they want you to do. They want you to three of swords this shit. Yep, three of swords. Put the swords in it. In the situation. Dead this shit. Hurt the feelings. It doesn't matter. This will get you out of this situation. Take you out of the three of cups. So they want you to dead the three of cups. That's divine masculine's advice. What are you advised to do, divine feminine? That's coming from spirit, divine masculine. Divine feminine. What you being advised to do, girl? Or dude? All right, Divine Feminine. And just like we said in the beginning, and it keeps coming up, the Four of Wands, is, this is the second time it's popped out. They want you to renew this. Make this thought shiny about this person. Because it's been, your idea of this union throughout the journey has got real mucked up, real dirty, real unclear. It's become a real unclear diamond. So they want you to take your diamond to the eye. Uh, Remember, a diamond could even be seen. I'll look at this as like the third eye. So they want you to see clearly where it's sitting at. You know what I mean? They want you to be able to see clearly, tap in. And when I say see clearly, we got the, the four of wands. It's the twin flame card. So they want you to remember why you began the journey. Because you forgot. Because it got unclear during the journey. So they want you to tap back in. Whatever it is, if you got to get your messages from the divine, if you just have to remember about the good times going back, or just remember, even if you had to write it down, like why did I why did I start this journey? Write it down. What else is divine feminist advice to do? <laughs> 